a singular sturm lobel problem involving Bessel's equation of order n. Consider, for a fixed integer n starting at zing 0, the singular sturm lobel problem given in equations 1, 2, and 3. 1 is Bessel's equation of order n with a parameter lambda, and we've included the bounded boundary condition in equation 2 for the singular point x equals 0, and we have a Dirichlet boundary condition at x equals l. We want to know the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions uh, of this singular sturm lobel problem. We know from our previous work that the bounded general solution of Bessel's equation of order n when lambda equals 1 is in fact y sub n a multiple of j sub n of x. We need to do a change of variables to find the general solution of 1 for a general lambda. For simplicity, set lambda equal to alpha squared so that Bessel's equation rewrites as in equation 4. Next, make the definition t equals alpha x, equivalently x equals t over alpha. To transform equation 4 into an equation with the independent variable t, we use the chain rule on the derivatives. Thus, for an arbitrary function y of x, we set y bar of t equal to the composition of y of x with the function x equals t over alpha. Then, by the chain rule, we get dy bar dt is dy dx times dx dt, and d, uh, x dt is clearly 1 over alpha, so dy bar dt bar is 1 over alpha times dy dx. We solve for dy dx here on the right, y prime equals alpha times y bar prime. Similarly, for the second derivative, we work it out and find d bar y bar uh, dt squared is 1 over alpha squared, the second derivative of y of x with respect to x. And solving for that derivative, we get y double prime e equals alpha squared y bar double prime. We're going to use both of these to transform the differential equation. When we use them in 4, we end up with the, the equation second from the bottom of the screen here. Uh, and we notice that since t equals alpha x, this equation rewrites as equation 5, which we recognize as Bessel's equation of order n with, uh, without the parameter. And we know from our uh, previous work that the general solution of equation 5, the bounded general solution of equation 5, is given in equation 6, constant multiples of j sub n of t. Transforming the solution back to the independent variable x by substituting t equals the square root of lambda x, we get the solution given in equation 7. This is the bounded general solution of our uh, of this uh, eigenvalue problem. So the solution that satisfies 8 and 9, we still haven't used 10, but the, the solution that satisfies 8 and 9 is given in 11, a uh, constant multiple of j sub n of the square root of lambda x times x. The final step is to determine the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions from the remaining boundary condition 10. Thus, we need to solve the equation given in the box here at the bottom of the screen. To have non-trivial solutions, we of course need a sub n to be non-zero, and hence the equation to solve for the eigenvalues is equation 12. Here's a fact we need to know about the Bessel functions, namely that each j sub n crosses the x-axis imply many times. That means it has imply many zeros. And standard notation from the literature is to denote by z sub n m the mth positive root of j sub n. Notice the ordering. The first index n is denotes which Bessel function, and the second index m denotes which root. Hence, we have the square root of lambda nm times l equals z sub n gives us the solution of equation 12, and we can solve this for the eigenvalues. The lambda nms are given as the square of the zeros divided by l squared, and the eigenfunctions y sub nm are the Bessel function j sub n evaluated at z sub nm times x over l.
Here's a plot of the first two Bessel functions, J0 and J1, from 0 to 20, just to show you, give you a picture of the fact that the Bessel functions have infinitely many zeros. Here, the red one is J0 and the blue one is J sub 1. They look somewhat like you know, a, a, the zeros of a tr the trig function sine x, but those are very regular. Uh, the zeros of the Bessel function are not regular. And they can be found in books, online, and in basic computer algebra systems like Maple and Mathematica. In fact, here's Maple tells us that the first five zeros of J sub 1, so in, Ma in Maple Bessel J zeros, the first uh, entry is the which Bessel function, and the second one gives us a range of which, Bessel, which zeros. So we want the first five zeros of J1, and they're given here in blue. Finally, we need to discuss the orthogonality relationship for the complete orthogonal family of eigenfunctions. Let J sub n denote the Bessel function of order n, n starting at zero, and as usual, as above, Z sub n m denotes the mth positive root of J sub n, and let L be a positive number. Then for each fixed n, the orthogonality relationship for the orthogonal family given here built out of j sub n's is given in equation 13. Notice the difference. There's a, In the first Bessel function, there's an m, and the second one a k, and we're assuming they're non-zero. This is the orthogonality of eigenfunctions. x uh, is the weight function. Finally, I need to remark uh, on something about this orthogonality relationships. Notice that for n not equal to k, we have in fact two distinct complete orthogonal families on the interval 0 to l. One built out of the Bessel function j sub n, and the other one built out of the Be uh, Bessel functions j sub k. The weight function for each of these orthogonal families is w of x equals x. However, it's important to keep in mind that the orthogonality relation shown in equation 13 is only among the members of each uh, individual complete orthogonal family.